Here is a nice look at most of the pumps offered for the ModuFlow line. The pneumatic pumps, as I mentioned in the overview, have a blue air cylinder, and this is anodized aluminum, so the shade is not consistent just because that's the nature of anodizing aluminum. You don't always get the same tint. One thing I've noticed is that the older ones from Lubriquip tended to be more of a teal color, and the ones that Graco makes are more like a royal blue, but that's not always gonna be consistent. They can they can be different shades of blue from different times, and that still is the pneumatic air cylinder for the pneumatic pumps. On the hydraulic pumps, the HL25 has just a silver colored cylinder chamber. On the HL5 and the HL5X, there is just a hexagon plug at the end. But you can see that all of these still have the, the same four holes on uh, for, for mounting, and then they have the same three holes that will receive the O-ring to seal against the manifold and the same bleed screw at the end. So the hydraulic pumps will follow the same bleed procedure as the pneumatic pumps. The electric pump is available in AC or DC versions and from the outside they look identical. The AC is a bit heavier because the motor inside is heavier. To open up the pump you can remove either of the two opposing screws but but just loosen the other two so that you can use them as a hinge. Once you have two of them removed, and I already loosened these two, now you can push in. Now you can push in and it'll pop open like that. From here you can see, hopefully, that the four screws to mount it are, are the same. You can get at them from there. Because you don't use either air or a hyd hydraulic fluid to drive this, it doesn't have the second and third hole for the small O-rings. We still use the same parts kit to ship with the pump with the same four bolts and you get the big O-ring and then three small O-rings. But just realize if you buy an electric module flow pump that you're not going to need all three of those small O-rings. One other thing I want to point out is that there is still the bleed screw here, but you don't want the grease shooting down into the, this enclosure. So there's a cut in where the grease is just gonna kinda seep out above the bleed screw. So once you have the air purge, you would just tighten that up and obviously wipe it off. One other note about electric module flow pumps is that they're sort of obsolete. We still carry them because of the modular nature and if people wanna keep their module flow set up and they need a new pump, you can still buy the complete pump. But for any new application, Use a G3 instead. The G3 is going to outperform the electric module flow pump. It's a much more modern design and it's just a better product. But if you have an existing module flow set up and you want to stay with an electric pump and you, you know your customer doesn't want to replace their reservoir, it's okay to keep buying these for now. As of March 2018, we still make the electric module flow pump, but I'm just saying that any new application, the G3 would be a better choice. With the pneumatic and hydraulic pumps, there was a change made a long time ago. We're talking about the mid 90s, where they, the old pumps, you can tell a difference of the old pump because the bleed screw wasn't on the pump. It used to be up on the manifold. And there are a bunch of other internal changes, but externally they have the same dimensions. So those internal changes affect the repair kits that you can buy. The old part numbers ended in a zero, and we're talking about the nine digit part numbers. For instance, this old AL25 says 521000021. If it was one of the really old pumps from before that internal change, it would say 521000020. That's gonna be consistent with all of the pneumatic and hydraulic pumps that had the old part number ending in zero. When they made that internal change, they renumbered everything up one more number, so then all the nine digit numbers ended in one. So if it has that old nine digit number and it ends in one, you can still use the current repair kit that we sell for each of these pumps. And then also if it has a Graco six digit part number on it, for instance, 563307 for the HL25, that's going to be the new design, obviously, any changes that Graco has made in the last 10 years have been minor and the repair kits are still going to work in the 
pumps that end in one or the six digit part numbers. Before removing the pump to service it, let's really quickly cover some troubleshooting tips. First, take a look at your pressure gauge. If your pump builds pressure, but the system doesn't work, that would be indicating that there's a blockage or some other problem with the divider valves downstream of this. So you'd want to troubleshoot the divider valves instead of servicing the pump at that point. If the gauge does not build pressure, it's possible that there was a blockage that caused the relief valve to burst, which these are burst discs that need to be replaced. So if there's grease coming out of the relief valve, then the pump is still working, or oil, the pump is still working and it probably doesn't need to be serviced. If the gauge doesn't read any pressure, it's possible that the gauge is broken, but that's not as likely as that the pump probably needs to be repaired or replaced. So that's when it's appropriate to service a pump is when you're not getting pressure building up on the gauge, that's showing that the pump isn't working, so it's time to repair or replace the pump. Modulo pumps were designed to be easy to replace so that when it does come time to repair or rebuild the pump, it's not an excessively difficult task. The main tool that you'll need is a 3 16 Allen wrench. There are four screws that mount the pump to the base plate manifold. The base plate manifold actually has a flapper valve inside so that once the four screws are loose, you can drop it off quickly and the pump body is what actually holds the flapper open. So when you pull it away quickly, then the fluid flow will stop so that you don't have to empty your reservoir every time you change the pump. One other tool that may be necessary is a 3 seconds Allen wrench. And that is to open the bleed screw that allows you to cycle the pump and bleed it of air. Let's take a look at how this is done. Right now, the pump is being held on by only one screw. If I loosen this and let the pump descend as I loosen it, the grease is gonna leak out because that flapper valve is held open. So when I'm loosening this last screw, I need to make sure I'm supporting the pump with my hand. Now that the last screw is removed, I'm gonna drop it off quickly. There, so there's a little bit of grease, but most of the grease is remaining up in the reservoir where it belongs. When installing a replacement pump or reinstalling your rebuilt pump, before you actually attach it to the base plate, make sure you have the right O-rings in the right places. There are three small O-rings that are all the same size, two for the air ports and one for the lube outlet port. And then the bigger O-ring, this is the lube inlet port. This is the piece that actually presses against the flapper valve and receives the grease from the reservoir. But just make sure all these O-rings are in place so that you don't make a mess later. Reattaching the pump is a little bit trickier than taking it off because now you have to line up some screw holes and try not to let a bunch of grease leak out in the process. Because once that flapper valve is pushed, then the grease wants to flow again. So again, we wanna push the pump all the way up and support it with our hand so that big O-ring seals around the flapper valve. And now that we have that done, we can be a little more leisurely in installing the other screws. But I need to leave it loose enough that I can still twist this a little bit and line up the other screws. These are straight threaded screws, so you don't have to torque them on really tight. Just get them snug and they're not gonna go anywhere. Now our pump is installed so we can move on to bleeding the pump. Frequently when you put the pump back on, you can just cycle the pump a few times and it will bleed the air out itself. But if you have a real tacky grease or some other stubborn fluid that doesn't wanna move through, then this bleed screw right here can be loosened and the bleed port is down on the bottom here 
and I'm going to show you how it looks when the grease is squirting out the bottom of the bleed port. One important detail is that this set screw actually captures a ball that forms sort of a check valve and when you loosen it, it allows the ball to come off of the seat. It doesn't need to be removed. In fact, it shouldn't be removed because if you lose that ball, then you can't seal this port anymore and the pump won't work until you replace the ball. So just loosen it a few turns and then cycle the pump a couple of times. See there, because this pump was already primed, we're getting a, we're getting the full shot of 240 thousandths. But that's the hole you want to look for. That's where the grease will bleed out of during the bleeding procedure. Now that it's bled, we can just tighten it up again. And again, it just needs to be snug because you're just pressing a ball onto a seat and cycle the pump some more and you'll get fluid out of your outlet.